Camels in the Tent. One wintry night a camel did say, Let me put my nose in the tent if I may. Of course, said the sheik, and in the nose went, and warmed right up in the heat of the tent. Could I warm my neck also, my master, said he? Why not, said the sheik, it doesn't matter to me. The camel looked about, feeling warmth on his face. Could I pull in my forelegs? You have plenty of space. Said the sheik to the camel, I don't care, go ahead. And he rolled a bit over, making space by his bed. The flap is still open, I've let in the cold. May I come all the way in? Asked the camel quite bold. The sheik, he just grunted and rolled to his right, and the camel, he squeezed in with all of his might. Now, he said, I see there's not room for two. One of us must go, and that person is you. <clears throat> and he pushed the sheik out until it was day, and scared him and chased him and frightened him away. The end. Our camel lives in the Middle East, like in Egypt and Arabia where the people worship Allah. Like our camel, these are people who move in and take over, not just tents, but entire countries. <clears throat> Those who worship Allah have a very big religion. It might be the largest in the world. It's called Islam. Many people are afraid of them because of what their belief tells them to do. How many people are they? Around 1,500 million and still growing. They pray to Allah five times a day. If you say anything bad about Allah or his prophet Muhammad, some of them will try to hurt you. Here's how Islam got started. Ancient warring Arabs tribes gathered peacefully at the Kaaba. They called it the House of Gods because it had 360 idols inside. Five of these idols belonged to Muhammad's Quraysh tribe. Ancient Arabs believed that Allah, the moon god, married the sun goddess and they had three powerful goddess daughters Alat, Aluza, Manat. But which one of these could lead the violent religion that was about to rise up? Muhammad became the spokesman. It all began in a cave when a powerful force grabbed him. First it strangled him, causing seizures, then it commanded him recite. Muhammad believed it was a devil. Somehow, his rich wife and her cousin could interpret his visions for him. It was no devil. He was an angel. You are a prophet of the top god, Allah. Later, these visions from Allah were written in a book called the Quran. <clears throat> Muhammad became very powerful. He cleared the Kaaba of all its idols he got rid of all his competition so he could choose one God for the Arab world. The words of the true God meant nothing to Muhammad. He was on a mission. Notice the crescent moon. <clears throat> Muhammad threw away the moon God idol but kept the name Allah. And it was the only God. And soon... Muhammad's religion caught fire. His army used the sword without mercy. Say it. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. 
I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. Smite ye above their necks and smite all their fingertips off of them. They burned cities, tortured and killed men, raped and enslaved women, all for Allah and his prophet Muhammad. Here's how they invade today. First, they're peaceful until they gain power. Then look out. Behead those who insult Islam. Massacre those who insult Islam. Slay those who insult Islam. In London. England is losing control and is closer to accepting Sharia law. This is their pattern for conquest. Infiltrate. Move in. Populate. Grow large families and recruit others. Legislate. Make laws against converting Muslims. Decimate. Take over the country little by little, one city at a time. Eliminate. Destroy those who do not submit to Sharia law. America's next. Hey. The camel's moving into our tent. May I come all the way in? Of course, we are a tolerant nation. Even leaders are afraid, but they still say Islam is a religion of peace. Who was this guy, Muhammad? Why do so many people die for him to this very day? I am prophet. I am the prophet of Allah. He was white and owned black slaves. One of his 23 wives was a six-year-old. He raped, lied, murdered, and his teachings sent millions to their death. Muhammad died and is now in hell. Look at what Muhammad taught. <clears throat> Muhammad taught that Satan stays in the upper part of your nose at night. When you awake, wash him out. He said, I was shown the hell fire and that the majority of its dwellers were women who were ungrateful. Muhammad said some Jews were turned into monkeys, pigs, and rats. He rudely said that Ethiopians have a head like a raisin. Muhammad believed these things, but he hated the Bible. You know why? <clears throat> Muhammad hated the Bible because it tells us Jesus Christ, not Allah, created the universe. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. One of God's chief angels, Lucifer, rebelled and was tossed out of heaven. Lucifer is known as Satan, and his fallen angels are the devils, or demons. Jesus prepared a future place of punishment for them. It's called the Lake of Fire. Jesus created Adam and Eve, our first parents. They had a perfect world. But Satan tempted them to rebel against God. They were cast out of paradise. Sinful mankind became enemies of God. Sin took away all hope of going to heaven. The only other place was made for the devil and his angels. So God's Son, Jesus, came to shed his blood to wash away our sins and save us from hellfire. <clears throat> Jesus, God the Son, became a man and allowed sinful men to put him on the cross. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus shed his blood on the cross to pay for all our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. After three days Jesus rose from the dead. Muhammad couldn't do that, but Jesus did because he's God Almighty. All those, oh, all who believe Jesus may ask him to forgive them and come live inside them. 
He takes them all from hell and will take them to heaven because his believers are his true church. But 600 years after Jesus rose, Muhammad blocked Arabs from believing in him. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad hated the Lord and his holy scriptures and called him a liar. Muhammad insulted the Lord Jesus when he taught Jesus was a slave of Allah. Jesus was not God's son. Anybody who believes he was is damned to hell. Jesus never died on the cross for anyone's sins. For 1,500 million Muslims, John 3.16 is blasphemy. At his trial, the high priest asked Jesus, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed, God? I am. Can a prophet lie? No. But Muhammad's lies will cost the poor Muslims their souls. Islam's days are numbered. I will put hooks into the, thy jaws, and I will bring forth... I will bring thee forth. Around 570 BC, the prophet Ezekiel foretold the destruction of both Russia and Islamic armies in a world war. When Russia, Magog, attacks Israel, Iran, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, and other Muslims will join to slaughter the little Jewish nation. <clears throat> what happens? Will Israel survive? You bet they will. Watch how Jesus Christ moves against his enemies. God will unleash his fury against them. Giant earthquakes, an overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Their armies will turn on each other. It will take seven months to bury all the dead. Russia and Islam are ruined. Then Jesus will rule the world for one thousand years at his second coming. The Lord Jesus will judge every soul that ever lived, including Muhammad. Do you fear the Lord Jesus Christ? You should. Fear him, Jesus, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus Christ can be your personal Savior and dearest friend or your deadliest enemy. Take your pick. Heaven or hell, the choice is yours. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Amen.